Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Gordon Bradley and I'm a longtime personal trainer and nutritionist. So today's topic, the name of the video is, should you be squatting? Um, yeah. So this is one of the fundamentals in life and this is something that you should have the ability to do throughout your lifetime. And unfortunately, as we age and as we sit more or we have injuries, we start losing the ability to squat and this is a huge problem. And one of the cool things, if you ever notice, who has the perfect squat? And there's a very good reason why and there's a reason that we should be using uh, what we can learn from this and the person that has the perfect squat is a baby. So babies have never had any issues um, they've never had any injuries. They've never dealt with some of the things that we deal with as adults and we start to lose that ability. So if we actually continue to use the squat, a lot of, um, a lot of countries overseas, they literally eat in a squat. They'll communicate in a the squat. They never lose that ability. And there's really good reasoning behind that. So I think that's something that we should adopt. It should be an assessment tool for kids and into teens and adults. If you can't do a full depth squat, then we know that you have issues and it's such an easy assessment that um, it could be a really valuable tool. So today, what I wanna talk about is still, again, some of the basics. There's so much that we could get into when it comes to squats. But I want to start with the basics, make sure that you guys are doing the right things at the right time with the right people. So what I have here is a list of things we need to consider. Do your glutes work? Do your ankles work? What is your experience level? What squat is right for you? Are your muscles tight? And do you need to stretch them? And how do you need to stretch them? To barbell or not to barbell? Should you be using a barbell? We're gonna go over that. So the first one, do your glutes work? And this is gonna be one of the most common ones and one of the ones that create the most issue. So I have some drawings here and we're gonna use these for some examples. But what happens is, and I just made a video about inhibited glutes and how it causes back pain, but when your glutes, because we sit too much or we're not exercising or being active, your glutes stop working essentially and when that happens we lose our ability essentially when we need to squat down to stay upright because the glutes aren't firing and they're not doing their job so if we look at this drawing here if you do an assessment and I ask you to do a full depth squat or as far as you can when you start to squat and you have to lean forward to compensate because your glutes won't hold you upright, then we know most likely that your glutes are inhibited or another issue, and that's the ankles. And we'll get to that in a second. So if you're someone that's squatting and you have to lean forward or arch your back or both, um, we know that your glutes are inhibited and that's going to set you up for answering some of these other questions as well. So we have to get your glutes working. That's the first thing. That's the most important thing. And it's probably the most common issue out there that we see losing the ability to fire our glutes. And then the second one is do your ankles work. And most people are actually, I would say a lot more people are familiar with your glutes being a problem, but less so. Uh, with your ankles not working correctly and this can cause issues in a multitude of ways if you're a runner and your ankles don't actually um, dorsiflex so dorsiflexion is the ability to create this angle so some of them are sharper of necessity if you can't create a nice big angle here then you lack dorsiflexion. And when you lack dorsiflexion, I drew it on this one, where you can't get your knees to go forward to create this bigger, sharper angle. And it's because of your ankles when you run, when you cycle, when you do anything that you should be moving through, uh, plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, now we have another issue. When you go to squat and those knees won't track forward at all, 
you're going to have to compensate with leaning your chest forward again. So when I do an assessment, I'm always looking for, is it glutes, is it your ankles, or is it your glutes and ankles, which is very common. Uh, often one can be the cause of the other, or they're both working synergistically to cause problems uh, within your squat. So the next question was, what is your experience? And this is where we're going to get into what type of squats that you should be doing. And down here, I have drawings of different types of squats that we're going to address. So this is a high bar, high bar barbell squat. And this is what it would actually look like. This is a low bar. Or I actually use this one for inhibited glutes because they actually look very similar. Uh, the bar would be lower on a low bar. Um, barbell squat, a front squat, very vertical um, chest, spine, lots of dorsiflexion, overhead squat, box squat, and a goblet squat. So these are the ones that we're going to address and which one should you be doing. And this is one that drives me crazy and this is where we all know there's good doctors, bad doctors, good trainers, bad trainers. And I'm going to tell you right now, if your trainer puts a barbell on your back on the very first day or even within the first several days and tries to get you to squat, uh, most likely your trainer is a dummy. That's, that's an issue. Unless there's one situation, and this is probably, this is my go-to with most people. So if you lack experience and we assess you and your glutes don't work, your ankles don't work, most commonly it's going to be glutes. That's the first thing we're going to attack. And if you put a barbell on someone's back and you're, they can't even do an air squat, an assessment type squat correctly, you're just going to make the, the problem worse and you're not going to be able to strengthen the the muscle that is actually the problem itself. So if your trainer has a barbell on your back um, within the first, even sometimes several weeks, like it has to be customized to you uh, and, and your experience and how your muscles are working, what level you're at. So here's the caveat to that, a box squat. So when I first start with someone and their glutes don't work, I would use the box squat or a goblet squat. And a lot of people's go-to is the goblet squat. But for me, I actually will utilize the box squat much, much, much more often. I think there's a lot more value, but it does have a barbell on it. But it is not the same as the high bar, low bar. It doesn't matter what type of squat. But what you can do here is we're going to target the glutes specifically because they are the issue and that's what we're trying to attack with the box you're able to actually come to a complete um, seated position your spine is vertical so we're not leaning because that would just exaggerate the problem so we're nice and upright the barbell is carried on your traps but here's the good thing you have a vertical shin so your feet placement would be wide like sumo stance i'm not going to get into too much of the details of the box squat but if you press your knees way, way out, you are going to fire your glutes because your glutes are the external rotators um, for, the, the, for the femur. So if that's happening, we can really target the glutes highly specifically and we get those working really fast. The goblet squat, I think, is much harder for people. An air squat is much harder for people. This is very simple and works very fast. So after that, we could go to a goblet squat, but most often, I will go to a high bar um, barbell back squat. And from here, this is kind of where we're going to go into, and we already started addressing this, what squat is right for you. And again, these two are kind of combined. What is your experience? So outside of that, what I want to do is get you, once you've actually created the ability to keep, keep an upright spine and get your glutes to fire and you've created a movement pattern, that's something we haven't got into. But sometimes it's not even just your glutes not working. It could be a strength issue. It could be a length issue. 
So maybe your muscles have become really short um, or they're short and weak. And once we've addressed that issue and we've moved on to something that's a little more complex, now we have the strength and stability and hopefully with this type of squat, if you don't have the right length, um, that's one of your issues. I actually like to, and this is going to segue right into your next question, is are your muscles tight and should you stretch? So as far as this goes, my opinion is as long as we've already got the glutes to actually strengthen and fire, you've created a good movement pattern, you understand why you're doing what you're doing, and we move you to this high, high bar um, barbell squat, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this squat as a way to stretch. It's kind of like a ballistic stretch or a loaded stretch, which is actually my favorite because once you're warmed up, and if you keep proper form throughout your squat, you're going to squat into those tight muscles wherever they may be. It may be your hamstrings, it may be your low back, it may be your calves. It may be a lack of ankle dorsiflexion, but if you're keeping all these things in line where they should be, you're going to stretch into that tight muscle. But you cannot let your form break. If your form breaks, you're actually now working against what you're trying to create. So hopefully over time, you just get lower and lower and lower because you're actually actively stretching those muscles under load, which is my favorite stretch outside of PNF. Um, so if you don't know what PNF is, it's something that I would actually research because I think it's probably one of the most valuable um, soft tissue work if you have um, tight muscles or we could get into a lot of that. So look up soft tissue work, uh, lacrosse balls, foam rollers are okay, but we want to make sure that you can complete a full range of motion in all of your major joints. So ankles, knees, hips, and one of the most important, of course, is the spine itself. We want to protect the spine at all times. So to the last question, to barbell or not to barbell? And I, I think I've kind of already gone over this and it depends on your experience. So these are all kind of related and that's what I wanted to get to is if you're doing things in the right order, in the right fashion and with techniques that are appropriate for you learning how to do my favorite squat a high bar barbell squat to full depth is only so far away and then from there we can start working into other types of squats but this is where we're going to go to order of importance and again some of this is going to be things we already talked about uh, but when and this is going to be this is going to be education for a lot of trainers out there that maybe lack some of the fundamentals but a goblet squat or a barbell back squat those should be uh, the most important so goblet squat and a box squat would be um, what I mean by goblet squat this first half here this is the most important thing so even if you can already squat a box squat can be very relative to just creating overall strength. Um, your barbell back squat, we already talked about that. It's fundamentally, if you're doing it right in full depth, we know that all your joints are working and then you start creating strength uh, throughout full range of motion, you're gonna be the healthiest version of yourself when it comes to uh, being able to squat, being able to be strong and uh, just having overall strength and functionality which is what we really need to keep and like I was talking about before and having that assessment tool where we're looking at can you do a full depth squat when you don't have a barbell or weight in your hands and that's what we're trying to accomplish you should be able to squat with your hands out in front of you all the way ass to the grass without bending over at all and that's ultimately what we would like to see you do um, so next one is a high bar back squat. So this one should have been a box squat because those are where you should be start, starting if you are new. And then what our goal is, is to have you 
keeping a very upright spine. So we're protecting that spine at all times. And we're trying to keep that barbell over your ankles. So as soon as you pitch, we can see this barbell is way over here. And your center mass is over your ankles. So we're way outside of center mass. We want to keep that when it comes to squatting. So after um, barbell back squats, we're trying to achieve the full depth squat, still high bar. Uh, we already kind of talked about that. Then one of my favorite squats of all is actually the front squat. So to achieve the front squat, you're going to have to have good shoulder mobility, um, good spinal mobility. So thoracic spine is going to be really important. Can you achieve any extension and hold it there? Um, is the front squat the most bang for your buck? I mean, in my opinion, I kind of think so. Um, in order to do it, you're going to have to have all your uh, joints working. You're going to have to be strong. So that's actually one of my favorite squats. So, but you shouldn't just jump to a front squat. You should earn the right to do these different squats. But that's one of my favorites, so it should be in your program at some point. Lastly is the overhead squat and low bar squat. So the overhead squat, this is really going to take a lot of mobility, overall strength, balance, but this is one that you shouldn't be attacking until you've already worked on. A lot of these other ones have gotten strong and stable in those first. But it should be at some point something that you should be able to do. If you can't achieve it, let's find out why. Is it your ankles? Is it your hips? Most often it's going to be your spinal or shoulder mobility. So if you're stuck sitting all day and you're in this forward posture and then you need to get your spine in a nice upright position, a lot of these muscles aren't used to that movement pattern. But by actually doing it and practicing and starting at the bottom and working your way up, you're going to see a lot of these other things improve because you're actually, you can't even do this squat. You'll fall on your ass in a second um, if you don't have all the prerequisite uh, mobility and strength and stability. So that's an awesome one eventually. But most likely that overhead squat isn't going to be something that creates a ton of strength. If you're someone that's looking for strength, um, overall strength, then the high bar back squat, and then even uh, the low bar squat. So low bar is going to be very hip driven as opposed to the barbell squat, front squat, um, overhead squat. These are going to be, the front squat and barbell back squat are going to be very anterior dominant, so quad dominant. Um, the low bar back squat is going to be very posterior dominant, as will a box squat if you're doing it right with vertical shins and really sitting back onto the box. So those are going to be posterior dominant. So that's another way that you can insert them into your workout program is if you are lacking quad strength or you're lacking posterior hamstring strength. You're probably going to be your strongest because you actually shorten the momentum arm. Um, and when you do that, you're going to have the ability to create more. It's leverage, essentially. And you're going to move the most amount of weight. But fundamentally, this is not my favorite squat. I think it's good to have a little bit of everything in your program. But I'm going to take the high bar uh, barbell squat to full depth as far as like functionality every single time and you can still really get strong in your front squats you can get really strong um, but not to say that you shouldn't do it you have the mobility and you have the want to create some posterior strength and insert it in your program um, that's ultimately up to you but this is kind of a general overview of the different types of squats when you should be using them why you should be using them who should be using them um, again, this is just a way to create some education for you guys, but also get you asking questions. And then we can kind of get into some of the more detailed aspects of these different types of squats and when to use them and why to use them. Um, but for now, we're going to stop it here. And if you guys have questions, let me know and stay.